name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Yeah, that's fine now. I'm going to English فبخصوص العربي أبونا حيقول لكم ملخص في آخر ال في آخر الكلمة. How joyous it is to get together and do praises and prayers the Virgin Mary in these two weeks. We remember many beautiful things that she has done in her life and in her son's life, our Lord Jesus Christ. And not just that, she was the pure mother, the righteous, the autocourse, the mother of God. But at the same time, she also suffered a lot for his sake and for our sake also. And especially when Christ was on the cross, you can imagine the mother's agony, seeing her son suffering in this way, although because of her strong faith, she knew that at the end, this is God suffering for all nations and for all generations. We also, what's happening in Egypt today, we must also feel the sufferings of our brothers and sisters in Egypt who have lost children or mothers and fathers in the uprising in our blessed land, Egypt. So we ask you, as Abuna Mark said, that we pray wholeheartedly for what's happening in Egypt and we have to feel what they're going through. Pope Tawadros sent a message that Christians, through their prayers, can do a lot more than the fighting that's happening in Egypt right now. Through our prayers, we can crush the devil, we can crush his evil trickery and what he is doing in Egypt. So please, in these coming days, pray as much as you can and ask God to have mercy on these people and to enlighten their eyes and their hearts to understand the truth. It's obviously that they are blind and they cannot see. And they're blind leading other blind people. So with your prayers, God willing, he will answer and things will change for your family in Egypt. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, when he said about John the Baptist, there is no one among those born of woman who is greater than John the Baptist, then in turn we should say about St. Mary, the mother of God, if you ought to course. There is no greater human being born of woman than the Virgin Saint Mary. In all generations. And as we know in prophecies throughout the Old Testament, they spoke about the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in turn, of course, there are some verses that spoke about the Virgin Mary also. We'll look at four of these verses. They should be on the screen coming up in front of you. The first one is in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15. And it said, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And of course this woman is the Virgin Mary and when Christ was crucified on the mountain of Golgotha, this is what he did. 
he crushed the skull and the, uh, the, the evil serpent. Also in Micha chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, he says, But you, brethren Ephratha, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to, the, to be the ruler of Israel, whose goings forth and from of old, from everlasting, talking about who? Jesus. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time, now note here, that she who is in labor has given birth, about the Virgin Mary. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel and so forth. That's a prophecy of the Virgin also. In Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44 and verse 2, it says, And the Lord said to me, This gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened, and no man shall enter by it, because the Lord God of Israel has entered by it, therefore it shall be shut. And for those who have never heard this verse before, it's obvious that Ezekiel is talking about the virginity of St. Mary, where although she gave birth to Christ, she kept her perpetual virginity until the end. And for all those who say that St. Mary gave birth to other children, of course this is all uh, wrong and a heresy in our church. The fourth verse, which is the most famous and well-known verse, is in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, which said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And this is how we know if, if it's a, uh, a proper Bible that you should read from, if it's not the New King James Virgin or any other gospel or reading. If they don't have the word virgin, then they changed it, then it becomes a Protestant virgin where they don't believe it was a virgin who was coming from St. Mary. We know that there are many women saints in this world and many honored women in this world. But the greatest honor goes to one, this is the Virgin Mary. And we know from history that every woman wanted a male because they thought that this male will be the Messiah. But after reading this verse in Isaiah 7.14, which said that a virgin will give birth to the Messiah, then everyone that was married said, well, it's not me then. They wouldn't understand. They wouldn't believe it. But when it happened, people understood. And that's why many widows, many women who were barren, like the mother of Mary who couldn't give birth, people would criticize her and ridicule her about not having children. As I said, many women were saints, but no one can hold this glory as St. Mary did. No one. Or be glorified. Because she had a humble heart, a meek heart. And not just that, she was a young girl of the age of 12. She had no pride, she had no ego.
and a person that can endure many things in her life. Talking about the age before we move on, a lot of us, especially the young teenagers, sometimes someone will give them responsibility like a parent or a teacher or a servant or our fathers are priests. They give them a responsibility and they say, sorry, we're too young. It happens, doesn't it? So you can imagine the Virgin Mary, who was only 12 years old, gave birth to God and held on to the responsibility. How difficult is that? But because she had a humble heart and a meek heart and a strong faith, this helped her through. About endurance, St. Anthony says, there are many who can endure sarcasm or ridicule, but how difficult it is to accept glorification. Again, there are many who can endure sarcasm, but how difficult it is to accept glorification. Because St. Mary is glorified throughout the generations. What's the feeling if someone praises you? What do you feel? You feel happy, you feel proud. If people keep on, keep on praising you, then your ego will come out, your pride will come out, your self will come out. You cannot endure this, not for long. That's why it's much more difficult to endure glorification. But with the Virgin Mary, because she was the mother of God, glorification with being humble was no problem. A person who can endure visions, St. Mary endured the vision of the Annunciation of Gabriel when he came and told her about the birth of our Lord. Not easy. Imagine if you're alone in your room and praying and an angel appeared to you. What will you do? You fall down and, and you know, some of you would, would not take it. Your hair will pop up and you say, I can't, I can't take this. She was ready to accept visions. She was a person who can endure miracles. You can imagine all the miracles that happen in front of her from day one, from the nativity. Giving birth, <clears throat> excuse me, giving birth to the Son of God, to God himself. Through a miracle and still st being a virgin. And what about the people who came and visited her in the nativity? like the, the shepherds and the three kings, the Magi, and the gifts they gave to Christ the King. And what about in Egypt, when every town they went to, the idols will fall down, and they'll get rid of them. We don't want you. They move on to another town, the same happens. The idols of Egypt fall down in front of Christ. Or when a rock was falling down on the family and Christ held the rock with his hand and an imprint of his hand is on this rock and protected the family. This is in Gebel Etir in, in Upper Egypt. They have this imprint on the rock. Of course, every place they went to, it was sanctified, made of monasteries and churches, and we also know about Al Muharraq Monastery, where you have the altar that was sanctified by Christ, where the Virgin Mary laid Christ on this rock, and it was sanctified. And when they came to anoint this altar, the angel appeared and said, Christ has sanctified it already, so 
don't anoint it. The midst of Egypt, the Pharisee of Isaiah, there will be an altar in the midst of Egypt. Or all the churches in Old Cairo. And not just that, there are many miracles that we don't know of since the birth of Christ and when he started serving the age of 30. All of this, we don't know anything of it. So you can imagine when he was a child, the many miracles that used to happen with the family. Who is a person that could endure greatness of her son and the influence on her? She was a normal person. But how did God influence this meek young girl? A person who can endure the praises for many, many generations. Every year we have these two weeks. Many of us fast from the beginning of the month. Many of us don't eat fish. Many of us maybe fast on salt and water, glorifying me. And many non-Christians fast, the virgin fast. No, not all, only that, but we have a full month in Kiyak that we glorify the Virgin in. And every day in the monastery, every day the monks glorify the Virgin Mary in the Tasbaha. Who can withstand all this? This glory or this praise? This is why St. Mary said, <coughs> praising, saying, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant to the angel. The Virgin Mary didn't say the lowly state of his mother to be, but she said the maidservant. Who can endure the descending of the Holy Spirit within the virginal womb in a hypostatic way and the miracles that was involved in this. Purifying inside of her and removing the original sin. And remember there was no baptism. St. Mary was not baptized back then. But when the Holy Spirit went in purified her and sanctified her and made her holy. So the baby Christ does not carry the original sin. Now we have uh, our differences between us and the Catholic Church who say that St. Mary did not have or carry the original sin, which of course we disagree with. But we believe she was a normal human being who did and was born with the original sin. Otherwise, she is not, no, not human, because we all carry the original sin. And that's why they glorify the Virgin Mary and worship her. But we glorify her and ask for her intercessions. We do not worship her. So we can, there's a difference. We ask that she intercedes in front of our Lord for us. Who is the humble and meek person that can endure the power of the Most High to overshadow her? Who is this humble person who can endure that he who is born to her is called the Son of God? Cannot enter our mind, can it? Imagine anyone of the female now sitting will give birth to the Son of God or to God himself. It's not easy to imagine. It's not easy to endure. Endurance. Who is this humble person who can endure the praises to her and the praises of Elizabeth? When she met Elizabeth, 
she said to her, But why is this granted to me that the mother of God comes to me? If she wasn't humble, then she could not endure these words. Who's the humble person that endures Elizabeth that said to her, As soon as the voice of your greeting surrounded in my ears, the baby leaped for joy inside of me. Even this little baby who was six months old, John the Baptist, when he met the mother of God, he leaped for joy. And of course, our church says that he worshipped the Virgin, St. Mary. This is why God waited for the fullness of time. God waited for the right person to come. And that means for every one of us, there's always a fulfillment of time. There is a right time that God will give you at the fullness of time what you want in his will. When we talk about endurance for the Virgin Mary, are we living this life of endurance? Can, endure, can you endure and withstand many of the situations that come across you in your life? At work or at home or between your spouses even between your children, for those who have children, where a child comes and asks for the same thing over and over and over again, what do you do? You shout to him and say, Kfaya, I can't handle this. Rashu Fabuk. I went to Rashu Fumak. I'll tell you a small story about about this. In the desert, one of the fathers had a problem and he could not solve it and he wanted an answer. And in those days, the cells, you would walk for miles to go and meet one of the fathers because Egypt in the third, in the fourth, fifth centuries, we had many, many thousands of monks <clears throat> and in order for this monk to go and, and visit someone else, he will walk for miles. So this monk went to his confession father, Abba John, and asked him about how he can fix his problem. And he told him. And then he walked back to his cell. But before he walked back, or before he arrived to his cell, what happened? He forgot. So he went back to him the same night and asked him again. And Father John told him again. And then he went to his cell. And when he entered his cell, he forgot. He kept on doing this several times all the night. And then he got upset from himself because he forgets. He has a problem, and the problem is forgetting. So he met St. John, or the Abba John, and he told him, sorry, Father, I forgot what you told me. Father John told him, that's OK. Get a lamp and light it. And then get other lamps and light it from that lamp. Then he said, when you light the other lamps from that one lamp, did anything happen to that one lamp? Did it lose anything? And he said, no. It's the same lamp. It's still lighting and it's still giving light to the room. The same with me. No matter how many times you come to me 
and I will tell you the same thing over and over again, it's not going to affect me. I will still give out that light, I will still give out what you want, but it doesn't, it will not affect me, just like the lamp. And so this simple monk learned the lesson, and of course God gave this monk a blessing of not forgetting again. And he would live remembering most of the things with good memory. It's the same with us. Do not be upset if someone is coming to you asking for a question over and over again. Take it in a simple form, especially if it's your children. We go through, for endurance, we go through a lot of training to be able to endure things in your life. But without the training and without the trials that will come across you in your life, then you will not be able to endure. So if you do have the problem of unable to be patient with others and unable to continue and accomplish a trial, then you're the one who is being at fault. And I remember at this time, a, uh, a story of Father Bishoy Kamel, when he was here in America many, many years ago, and he was serving in one of the churches here in America, and you know that you pay the salaries for the fathers. And back in those days, it was much less than these days. So, while he was serving, he asked that he went to the committee of the church and asked them for a raise of a hundred dollars. Some of the committee people were nice and said, sure, why not? We, we should give the extra hundred dollars to Avuna. But some others, as usual, disagreed. So there was a, an issue here. So one of the committee members wanted, he was, he wanted to know why is he asking for this 100 extra dollars per month. So he went to Abuna Pshoy. He told him, Abuna, why are you asking for a raise? And he said, 10 months ago when I came, they told me, Abuna, how much do you want as wages to serve us? And he asked them, what is the minimum charge for a salary? And they said 300. He said, okay, well, I'll only take 200. Then, said, then the guy told him, then why do you want the extra 100 now? He said, because... I am leaving America and going back to Egypt. And the priest that is coming after me, if he comes with a family and asks for a rise to the 300, then the committee will get upset from him. Then they'll think that he's coming for the money and he wants the extra. So I am I am here to fix this up, to get the 300 now, so when he comes, he doesn't have to ask for the extra money. This is Father Bishoy Campbell, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are from Alexandria and know this great man in our church. Always in endurance and in trials, always look at others. Don't look at yourself. 
always think of others. Always think of others in the right way. Lift them up. Say, maybe they're in need of something which we don't understand. That's why we endure to help others. When the angel announced to St. Mary about the birth of Christ, he said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Behold, the handmaid servants of the Lord, let it be according to your word. What is this? We call this submission. Submitting to an angel who is a stranger, she doesn't know anything about him, but she submitted to him because he is from God. How many of us can submit to things in our life? How many of us can submit to what our parents say? Or vice versa, what our children want? Or because we're older than them, we should not listen to them? How many of us can submit to our husband or wife? Or at work, submitting to your authorities? Or to the government? like what's happening in Egypt now. How many can submit to the current government? It's obvious that a lot of people do not want it from the brotherhood. What about us Christians? How many of us are submitting to the losses that we're having from our family and friends and from the, the churches that are being burnt? We believe that whatever happens to us, God is allowing for a reason, and a better reason. We say these churches that were burnt in Egypt today, maybe they're small churches, so God wants to expand them, so he gives the chance for this to happen, so they can expand and have a larger church and a better church. This is to simplify it a bit. Submission, like the Virgin Mary, especially when submitting to God himself. If God is telling you from the gospel to do things, you do it in submission. You do it in simplicity. You do it in meekness of heart. Although the Virgin Mary wanted to be a virgin all her life, God gave her both. Gave her to be a virgin and gave her the motherhood to be a mother and caring for a child. Sometimes in our lives we only want one thing and our mind sticks to it and that's it. But trust me when it's from God okay and it's strong and you need a bit of variation and a bit of change accept it do not be hard hearted do not be mukhakneshif submit and ask then this is God's will like someone your parents are nagging you to marry to the teenage girls especially <clears throat> they're nagging you, you have to get married this is just, you're getting too old for the, you won't find a perfect spouse for you I'm telling the parents do not nag because when God wants 
you will get the right person for them. Let God work. But at the same time, I want the people or the teenagers to work and pray about this and ask God to choose for them the right person. <clears throat> St. Mary lived the life of submission, and especially when the angel told her and the child and Joseph to go to Egypt. They went. Then the angel, after three and a half years, told them go back to where? To Jerusalem, to Israel. She was submi submitting. And the life of submission is not only from the outside, but also from the inside action. Like she was, although Christ was the king and he was befitted to be a king, but she lived the life of compulsory poverty all her life. When she was looking to give birth, she didn't find an inn or a hotel or a hospital. She was in a manger, the life of compulsory poverty, living a simple life. But this is because she had faith, and she did not doubt. See, a lot of us lose trust and doubt God because we want not what he wants, not what his will is. We want our will. And because we don't get what we want from God, then we lose trust in him and we doubt him. It's like Gideon in the Old Testament. And the angel told him, go and take the army with you and fight, and God will stand with you. He tested him. He doubted. He said, give me a sign. The fleece outside will be wet and the, the grass around it will be dry and vice versa. And God gave him a sign. But he was doubting. But still God stood with him. So what I'm saying is do not lose hope and do not lose trust. And ask God to give you his grace. Because grace is only given from above. And the, uh, after we finish the liturgy, at the end when Abuna throws the water and says, the love of God the Father, then he says, the grace of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So grace only comes from the Lord. We could not work for it. We could not acquaint it. God has to give us this grace. So ask God to give you the blessing of his grace. And with grace and faith, the equation is inner happiness and inner joy. Grace plus faith gives you contentment and inner happiness. And this is how the Virgin Mary lived. Having the grace and having strong faith made her happy. So the poverty did not really affect her in any way. Our church ranks the Virgin Mary above the angels and the archangels. And this is how we draw in heaven. We call her the second heaven. And that's why when she appears to us, she appears in a blue, a blue robe resembling the sky or the heaven. And she resembles a lot of things in our church, and especially something like the Ark of Covenant in the Old Testament. It was made of undecaying wood called acacia wood, and it was inlaid and outlaid of gold. And even the four poles that the priest used to carry it with was also made out of gold. 
And this resembles the purity and holiness of St. Mary. Inside of it, we had the rods of Aaron that blossom. We have the cup of manna. And this resembles, of course, Christ, because Christ resembles the bread of life coming down from heaven. And we also have the, ten, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, which is the Word of God incarnate. So Christ resembling inside of this tabernacle and the Virgin Mary. Also, a shoria of the censer. We also say it resembles the Virgin Mary. And we, in every Mass, we pray the Taishori or Tishori, saying the censer of pure gold, which is the Virgin Mary, carrying the flamed coal, which is Christ's nature, both the divine and the human, resembling in the coal, the Shuria. Also, the fiery bush, when Moses saw God in the fiery bush, this again resembles St. Mary, where the Holy Spirit entered her, but did not destroy her. What a beautiful feeling for St. Mary the Virgin to have Christ living inside of her for nine whole months. What a blessing. What is the feeling that she felt during this time? God has given her grace from inside and out. God has given her glorification in her life, in her death, even in her assumption when her body went to heaven. And this is why we're fasting the two weeks where the disciples were waiting to see the assumption of the Virgin Mary after Thomas saw it. Even in, in, in her intercessions, when we ask the Virgin Mary to pray for us in heaven, or the many visits that she has appeared in the world, and even in Egypt, in the Zaytun, and also in Papadopoulos, Saint Damiana in Egypt. We learn from the Virgin Mary her meekness, her purity, we learn from the Virgin Mary her service. Something simple like once the angel Gabriel told her that your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant with six months, straight away she left everything and went to serve Elizabeth, her cousin. We learn from St. Mary her silence, her meditations or reflections. We learn from St. Mary during the 12 years that she lived in the altar, in seclusion, in learning the Bible and the verses, and the Psalms and the praises. We learn from St. Mary how when she met Elizabeth, they were praising and saying words that would uplift them. Not how ladies these days get together and talk about nonsense and gossip. We learn from St. Mary endurance and submission in our life and to accept all that comes from God in your life with praises and thanksgiving. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.